G'day and welcome back. I have this HMV radiogram to do a bit of a service on. This is an Australian built HMV Studio 7. The model number is T3-45. There should be a lid either side of the tuner here. The owner has those. Uh, there's the tuner and it's showing a bit of age there. Uh, it just needs cleaning up. It's in good condition apart from the paint's fallen off. These knobs used to be white if you can see them. Uh, these buttons here were also white so I can treat those if I want to. The fascia here is plated with a gold, what, I don't know what they use, but it's gold. And it used to have a track of gold around the edges, and now the paint's come off it. So I can refinish that, that'll be easy to do. And as you can see, the dial string's broken. There's one pointer there, one pointer there. They should be over here somewhere, running like that. The reason I've ended up with this is because the owner said there's no sound from the record player. Uh, it's got power on it. I'll just select radio. And this is the volume. Need some work. I can hear it. I haven't got an antenna on it and I can't tune it either. It's got some problems with the tuner. Oh, there. So the radio works and there's sound from both speakers. It's perfectly balanced. I've already done some of the troubleshooting on this and told the owner what was going to be involved. But what I did was disconnect the phono input here from the record player. And I'll select radiogram in this bottom corner, turn the volume up a bit. I've got a screwdriver here. If I touch that, it makes a hum. If I touch the right hand channel, there's only a very, very slight hum. You wouldn't even be able to hear it. This board here is a preamp, and that's where the problem's going to be. This one is, I assume, the output stage, and the tuner comes in and feeds that alright. It's balanced, that's fine. So this preamp board is suspect and it'll be one side of it. So I'll have to pull that out and have a look. It does produce a little bit of hum. So I'll probably have a look at that filter cap. Uh, I don't really know what they're doing, but they're pretty old. There's some other little caps in here that probably worth changing. I don't want to get too far in there with this metal screwdriver, but you can see here there's a white capacitor. There's a bulge in it. That's in the power supply. So I guess it's going to ground. I'm not sure what it's doing. The record player is not working very well either. This needs a service. So if I put it on play or auto, yeah, it can barely move the mechanism. So that needs to be serviced and the cartridge is broken. The first thing I want to do is take this out. I'll put it on my bench and we'll see what's going on. I have the chassis on my bench now. I've connected two speakers and I've added some resistors there to match the impedance a bit better. And turn this on and we'll test again. <laughs> That's working. I've got the balance in the middle. I've got my signal tracer here. I will connect it to what was allegedly the faulty one. Uh, turn it on. There it is. So that's definitely working. It's the same as the other one. Yeah, that doesn't really surprise me. Often you pull things out and they work. I'll put this back here and oh, it's working. I'll put the chassis back in the radio. I'll just try it again, see if it's still got the problem. Uh, the radio is running, it's on gram, the volume's up. So that's the good one. This is the one that's, yeah, so it's the speaker or the wiring, yeah, okay. Okay, there's a board on the back here that the speakers go into, so they come out of the plug from the radio and go onto these clips. And then they come out on this terminal post, here's the wire going to the speaker itself, that's in that terminal post. If you're going to fit an external speaker, you would take that wire out, I assume, and put your own speaker in there, there's the ground. So I've wired from the chassis straight onto the speaker itself. So let's see how it goes now. All right. So the problem's in this little speaker network here. I'll have to pull that apart and clean it up, see what's going on. I've removed the board and I cut the two earth wires that were going from the speaker, so I had to cut them out. Uh, but it all looks fine here. Can't see anything wrong unless they're corroded in there. So I'll just check with the meter and see what we've got. 
So I've connected to the black wire there. Ah. <laughs> There's no black wire connected to it. It's broken off. Here's the black wire. And gee, that looks like it's been cut. Uh, so here's the black one here. What's it? That's been wound around and soldered onto the red wire. I'll go and set the radio up again. I'll go straight to the speakers and see what's going on. Has it lost the channel and someone's just joined the two together? I'll have a look. I've set it all up again. I've got jumper wires going directly onto the speaker wires. I'll turn it up. It's on radio. If I take the jumper off here, yeah, that's killed the left speaker. I'll take the jumper off here. It's killed the right speaker. So both channels are working. So I'll put it on gram. And there's the two phonos. And they're both working. So both channels are working. So I don't really know why they joined it. Has it fixed itself? Is it intermittent? So I think what I'll do is just continue uh, replacing parts as required on this. Maybe I'll find something as I go around. I have my radio back in the shop and I want to try it again before I start changing these capacitors. There must have been a reason they shorted out the two channels while well, they just had two speakers driving off one of the channels, uh, which I think is that one. So this one must have an issue somewhere. So I'll put some power on. I'll just whack this and see if I can make it break down or something. So there's the power. And turn it up. There's no signal. Now, I was doing that yesterday. Yeah, I'll turn it over. Turned it over and I've got power on. I'll turn it up. Yeah, it's not doing that. So the ferrite antenna is working, and that's what was working yesterday because it didn't have an antenna. Right. This clip here is the antenna. Oh, it's doing something. No, it's not. Ah, that's because that wire was leaning over. Okay, I'll get a bit better shot. There's the wire coming up from this connector. It goes through this resistor, there's a coil, and it comes out here. There's the wire broken off. I can't see where any wire has been. Somebody must have cut that off as well. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, there's the coil. This one is going to ground. You can see it down here. So that's the ground end of the antenna coil. So that coil runs up there. It'll go to the top of the capacitor. It's going somewhere else here. I'm not sure where that's going. And then to induce a signal from outside, they wrap another couple of coils around the main coil. And that end is tied to ground, so this end's got to come out one of these. You can't see the one at the back. So if I clip that on there, I reckon this will work. There it is. So I'll turn it up. Yeah, that's working properly now. So I'll tune around the dial, see what we get. That's about it. Oh, look, it's really tight there. I can see what it's doing. It's hitting this uh, belt. No, it can't be balanced. It's got two pots. That must be balance. This will be treble or something. Base. Yeah, the wheel is hitting that pot. Anyway, I'll turn this over again. I'll give that right channel a belting and see what happens. I'm all set up again. It's got power on. Put a bit of volume on. And, uh, experienced some dramas along the way in this series, but it really wasn't much of a series. Travis Head, player of the match in Adelaide and Marnus Labuschagne was player of the series. Now, if you thought the ABC's present... Well, I don't know. It's working fine. Been out now since Monday. As you can so see, both week, channels are working here. Brief for this edition on the men's upcoming series against South Africa. Of course, that's only... So, I don't know. Anyway, I'll keep going with what I was going to do. First, I'm going to have a look at that tuner. Here's the bottom of the tuner that's rubbing on that pot up the top there. And I think it, the problem is these rubber mounts have just melted gone hard so if i replace those that might fix that problem if you give me a few seconds i'll replace all these capacitors uh, then i'll come back and we'll have a look at this tuner mounting over here and see what's going on there then we can try it out i've changed all the electro caps and there's over here somewhere here's the casualty list and you can see that one there says 1068 so it'll be 10th month 68 these are the ones that go from the power into ground as uh, suppressors or noise suppressors and that's the one that's got the bubble on it 
but the other one had completely blown the end out so that was uh, just floating around there's the other end so they get a hard life those ones so i'll put some power on it and we'll see if it still works Please do. So after I had my sad little Christmas at home with my bag of Just tune it a bit. I we can't move it. Well, it's working still, so that's good. This is the bottom of the tuning capacitor. I'll remove all these screws and see why the whole thing sunk like it has. We'll start by taking the screws out. I'll take this plate off too, and then I can work on it easier. That'll leave the tuner behind. Here's the mounting plate, and if you look at the end there, oh yeah, that plate's supposed to be square with this, so the, the rubber's turned into something else. It's very hard. Let's see if I can get one out. Well, yeah, yeah. There's still a little bit rubber. Right. I'll go and clean all this up and put some new grommets in and that should fix it. Well there it is, I've cleaned it up, I've fitted some new grommets. The grommets are too wide in this gap here, so they kind of wouldn't take up that gap. So what I've done is made up some little spaces and put them in there and the grommets will hold those. Now also these are, are a bit long for the grommet or the grommet's too thin. So I've drilled out some little washers here. And I'll put those on there first, it goes that way, and then I'll fit that in there. And then that's got a nice little spring on there. So if I put the screw in, it should just squeeze it together. Having done all that, the easiest thing to do would have been to just take off, you know, maybe a sixteenth of an inch here or so, or a millimetre or so, and just squash the, um, you know, the grommet on there. So, uh, but that was too easy. <laughs> I, look, I really just didn't want to change what's here. Somebody might come along one day and try and do it properly. I'll go and install this and this should fix the problem I had. I've reinstalled the tuner and I put it on one time and I had these washers under the little brass things there and uh, I decided to take them off. It was squashing these too much. So that's nice now. It's just got a nice little spring in it. I'll turn it over and we'll see what it looks like on the other side. Uh, this is it from the top if you like and it's working very nicely and it's not hitting the potentiometer anymore it's also vertical too it's not leaning over like it was so that's good it's got just enough spring in there that's good it's a little bit late now in the morning i'll tackle the dial string good morning i'm going to do this restring today uh, first thing i'll do is take this front fascia off it has three screws in the top there i think there's a couple of screws going through the back plate on the other side of the radio. As I thought there's two screws on the back plate here so I'll take those off we should be able to take it off. I've already removed the knobs. There when you know there's two on the side as well. All right this should come off now and there's the string. There's the original color of the knob so maybe I'll peroxide those see if I can make them look a bit better. I'll see if they'll come off if it won't come off, maybe I can. Oh, it's coming. I was going to say I can put the whole switch in. Oh, that's easy. And it's just got some clips. A bit of wobbling seems to do it. I'll go and wash these thoroughly and put them in a bag of hydrogen peroxide, stick them out in the back lawn, see how they come up. The string run on this is very, very simple. I don't know anyone that doesn't like a good restring. So, first thing to do, I'll get this spring out. I've tied some new string to the spring. I've wound that up the top, put a bit of tape on here to hold that. I'll just thread the string through the bottom. I should be able to pull that through. And I'll pull the string so that the tuning gang shuts completely and I can pull against it. So I'll feed the string under the wires against the uh, chassis there. It should come out on the top somewhere. And there it is there. There's the pulley there. So if I go into these wires, so I've got it. I should be able to pull that through. Yeah, should be able to feed it through there. And there it is there. 
So far, so good. You put that wire there, I'll go under that. I'll pull that tight, put some tape on there as well. Just try and get it in the little groove there to hold the string. And there's the pulley on the other end. Uh, now, I decided I'd go under here. Uh, one, two wraps. Then it heads down underneath the pulley here again. I'll put that down there and I should be able to pick it up underneath. So I'll put some tape on this spindle so I don't lose it. So there's the string come through. Tape this on. I think it'll need to go around again. I'll have to go around that wheel again. I didn't go all the way around. I, I made a mistake there. Uh, I've dropped it in here. I think that's enough. So it should just go in there. I'll have to stretch the spring a bit. I'll do all that. I'll come back and we'll see if it works. That's tied off. So I'll just get the um, tape off. Oops. Just hang a clip on here for a second. So we can see what it's doing. So that seems to be working pretty well. I'll finish all these off. I'll mount the pointers properly. They've got to be aligned, of course. But before I do that, I'm going to have to try and repair that front plate. I'm out in the shed and I've got the front with me. I've taken that, the plastic dial glass, it pretty much just fell out. So what this is, is gold, like a gold plate, and then it's got black over the top and they've highlighted the gold for, you know, gram, mic, volume, all that sort of thing. Uh, but it's got corrosion in the cast aluminium here. And you can see it there, there's little bubbles. Uh, it's here as well, through, yeah, look at that. So underneath that, I think, that, that those little spots are probably corrosion. So I'm going to paint strip this whole thing and maybe put this in the sandblaster to get this stuff off. The gold around the edges here is totally gone. It's completely gone. So if I can get all the bits of corrosion off here, maybe spray it gold around here, you know, fill in the blacks again, uh, that might work, and then put a clear coat over the top to protect it. So I'll hit it with some paint stripper. I'll come back when that's done and we'll check out this corrosion. All right, there it is. The paint came off easily. The corrosion around here is worse than I thought. It's all the way up here, all around here. It's around all the knobs. So I'm not sure what to do. I was hoping that the gold on here would stay put. Then I could paint this black and just carefully wipe those away. And then the words would come back. I can't see how I can. There's corrosion right around those words. Probably the best thing to do would be to hit it with the sandblaster. You can't treat it because it's underneath the gold. It's just sort of tunneling underneath. So um, you need, need to get it all off. I think I'll hit it with the sandblaster. I've sandblasted, ground, scraped this thing to get all the corrosion off. And uh, I think I've done okay. I've got some vinegar here. I will just paint that on, let it sit for a while and wash it off. And that should neutralize the corrosion, the aluminium corrosion. Now there's products around somewhere, but I can't find any. I don't have any. So this will do. This will work pretty well. I'll put a bit of glad wrap over it or cling wrap, whatever you call it. Just, just to stop the vinegar, you know, drying up. So I'll leave that for a little while. I'll come back and I'll put it in the wash. I'll scrub it off with some uh, soap and water. I cleaned the vinegar off with soap and water and then washed it all down with hot water. I've cleaned it with some oil and grease remover. Uh, so now I'm going to give it a coat of etch primer. And the etch primer should stick to the aluminium and hopefully it'll stick to the gold plating. I've hit the gold plating with a sandblaster to give it a bit of an etch. So it should stick, the paint should stick better. All right, here we go. I'm going to let that flash off, give it another coat. I will put a filler coat on there to fill up the little um, dents that are left by the corrosion I took out. So hopefully it'll come up nice and smooth in the end. I ended up putting three coats of the etch primer on and it's amazingly filled up most of the little imperfections. So we yeah, are very happy with this. I've cleaned this up with some steel wool and it really is pretty good. But anyway, I'll still give it a bit of this filler paint and that should fill up any little defects in there. All right, I'll let that dry off. I'll see if it needs another little coat. I've sort of put it a bit thicker in the areas where it did have a little damage still. 
but uh, I can sand that off later and that should come up nice. I've done a little bit more work to this since I last showed you. This area here had a bit of plating missing, so I filled it up with some pink filler. Same down here, there was some plating missing, so and there was a couple of little tiny holes. So I just touched them up with pink filler and reprimed it again. So this is dry. I'm going to use this super gold, and hopefully that'll look similar to what it used to. I have it on a carousel as well. I'm only going to do these edges. It'll get overspray here, but just the edges inside here, and that's all it needs. The rest of it will be black. Right, that's come up really nice. Gee, that's a good colour, that paint. Um, so I'll let this dry. I think I can recoat it in about an hour, so I'll give it another coat. I'm ready to paint this now. I've masked this off with some low adhesion tape. I probably should have done the black first, and then I should have put the silver on later. I tossed up as to what to do there, but I ended up doing it that way. In future, I'll do it the other way. I have my grandson Jet here at the moment and he said he can do the Rubik's Cube faster than I can paint this bit of plate here. He's at my workbench in the other room, so I'm going to tell him when to go. He'll do the Rubik's Cube, I'll paint this. Are you ready Jet? Okay. Okay, let's go. Now first I've got to shake the can of course. Then I'll put a coat of paint on. Empty. I'm gonna get another can. Done. All right, that's one coat. How'd you go, Jet? He's finished already. All right. Well, looks like Jetty won. I'll give this coat a bit of time to dry. I'll come back, give it a couple of more coats. Damn kids. Uh, welcome to the second episode of Dumbass Diaries. Um, it's exactly what I feared would happen. This black paint will not stick to the gold and you can just peel it off like plastic. So I had roughed that up, but it still didn't stick to it. And I was afraid of that from the start. So I should have laid down the black then put the gold edging on. That was the obvious thing to do. Anyway, I'm going to fix all this. When it's all finished, we'll resume with the rest of the radio. While I redo that fascia plate, I thought I'll just give this a very quick alignment. It was either the last video I put out or the one before. I got a comment from a subscriber named Gordon. He said, why don't you use a, an old OPT, output transformer, to increase the output signal for the meter? And I replied, well, the reason I didn't do it, of course, is because I never thought of it. So what I've got here is a old output transformer. It's only a very small one. I have wired it in series with the speaker wire going to the speaker. And these two wires are the primary, what would normally be the primary. And they're going back to my meter. And i got to say, the results are spectacular. I've got my old generator running at the moment. I've got it on 455, so I'll use that one. I've got the signal going into the base of transistor 1 through a 0.1 capacitor. I'll put some power on. Let's try this. And... A bit better, a bit bad, a bit better. Out there somewhere. Once again, that's probably about it there. And again on this one. Yeah, these these are these are ripe. There's, yeah, not, there's nothing wrong with these. I think that could go back a bit more. And here's the last one. A little bit out of that one. So there's that one there. That's it. I'll just go back. Do the light, I'll come back when I'm finished. All right, I ran through those a couple of times and they're pretty good. They did move slightly, so okay. 
I now have the generator going through about a 200 puff cap and it's going straight into the antenna point. So the next thing to do is the RF. Here's an adjuster here. That probably is the oscillator patter. And as we all know with these ferrite antennas, that's the antenna patter. This smaller tuning capacitor is the oscillator. This will be the oscillator trimmer. And around the corner, you can just see him. There he is there. That'll be the antenna trimmer. So we'll do these two at 1500 or 1400 and the antenna, and this one here, will be done at 600. I've just lent the plastic dial glass in position, and that's where it goes. I've set the two pointers up to where they should be. There's marks on the plastic dial glass here somewhere. There's one there, and one there. ZL is there, that's 600, and there's a little tiny mark there to confirm that. So if I put that on 600, and I'll put the generator on 600. That's close enough, really. There we go. If I turn this up, we should have a noise. We don't have a noise. Let's see where it is. I'll just tune it. Oh, it's down there. So I'll put this back to ZL or the 600 mark. Oh, getting a bit of noise through there. And this one here is the padder, as we said. So I'll adjust that now. There it is. I won't adjust the antenna yet. We'll run it up to uh, 1500 or 14. No, we we'll go 15. Uh, where is it? There it is. A little mark there, and there's 3AK. Now I've had to put this camera miles away, so this little thing I'm touching here is the capacitor, and you just wind off some wire, and that, if you can see what I'm doing, and that will lower its capacitance. Is that making it better or worse? It might be making it worse. Hmm, I think that's actually making it worse, which puts me in a spot. I thought I had some little capacitors I might have been able to substitute. Uh, they were still too big. This only measures uh, maybe six um, picofarad. So all I've done is joined up with the old wire, wrap my own little bit of wire, I've just held it there with a bit of nail polish for the minute. Alright, so what I'm going to do is wind it back to just short of the mark on 3AK. And we'll see if we can tune that in. So I'll just wind this off. So that nail polishes work well. We're getting close. Yeah. I've cut that excess bit of wire off. No, it's still short. So a bit more off. Nope, still short. Not far to go though. Once again, I'll just trim the tail off there. I'll just adjust it. I think it's still up there somewhere. I don't think I'm near it. I think it was getting a bit close. I'm not. So. We have the meter there, we are right on it there, we're just slightly off to the side. Bend that out of the way, I'll see what happens. That is absolutely spot on. The trouble is, I've got to go and do the 600 again, and it might be out. If that's out, I might be out here. I've put the generator on 600, I'll just bring it back to uh, ZL there. And peek it using the meter, just for fun, and there it is there. Of where I am that's perfect so good job so I'll leave it on that 600 mark as I said before the padder for the antenna is here so the pad is adjusted at the bottom at 600 I managed to get that loose just by twisting it so that's about where it was it's getting worse so it's about Look, that's it there. So I've moved it probably about four millimeters now. I'm back on 1500 again, so I need to adjust this aerial trimmer. And if I can get on it, this will be the last one I cannot get on it. 
I'm going to have to do it by hand. So I'll take a reading, turn it slightly one way, see if it makes it better. No, it made it worse. I'll go uh, clockwise. Slightly better, maybe. I think it's about right, actually. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. Yep, that's fine. So I'll leave it there. That is the end of the alignment. Well, I think that's about it for this. I've got a couple of new globes I've got to put in there. Uh, the needs are clean, the whole chassis. I'll take it outside and just wash it down a little bit or clean it up. I won't be washing it. Also, with the 12 works in this room, you see references. So that's working really well now. This radio's got 6.3 volts with 300 milliamp globes in it, but they're the Bayonet type. I didn't have any, I had to order them specially, which costs a fortune by the time you put in the postage or courier service in this case. So that goes that way. All right, let's see if they work. Yeah, they're good. Uh, now, something I did toy with was to save the bayonet base here and get a new globe here with the um, Edison screw on it, unsolder the two points in there for the filament. Let's kind of break this off, it wouldn't really matter. Uh, this one, break the glass, clean it out, and mount this glass in this base. I've had these in a plastic packet in the backyard and soaking in hydrogen peroxide, and they've come back pretty good. So they're, actually, they're very good. I tried to then polish these insides here, the aluminium. I put them in my lathe back here and tried to polish them, but this, this one's not bad. There's corrosion all in the corners there. I can't get that out. And the silver on this knob here is dented and corroded, so I can't fix that. So what I thought I might try and do is glue a bit of aluminium. It's reasonably shiny. It doesn't have to be shiny. I've got some double-sided tape on it. I've put a flat plate on my um, lathe here. That's made of wood, of course. So I'll glue that, and I'm going to try and machine a circle. Now I've got a bit of dowel here. It's 25 mil in diameter. I've actually machined it a bit to make sure it runs concentric. And if I glue that on there, like that a bit for a second. All right, well, that's stuck on there, so I'll push this in, and I should be able to get my dowel in there, kind of try and get it centered somehow. It's not quite centered. I'll try and get it in a bit closer. It doesn't really matter, I suppose. That's not bad. So I'll tighten all that up, spin her up. Now, I should be able to wind this in, and this should cut a 25 millimeter disc. Oops. All right, what's happened is it, I tried to just cut straight in with an angled bit and you can't do that. I needed to move into it slowly. Right. So that's what I should have done the first time. Tried to get that excess off, then come in slowly and do it. So lesson learned. So I'll clean that up. I think we'll be undersized. I'll have to start again, but that's the idea. I'll measure it, but it's going to be undersized. So I'll throw this one out. 24, yeah, it's too small. I'll take this apart, I'll load another one. All right, I've got another bit of metal in there. I've got to get it down to 25 millimeter and it's reading 25.14 or something. So I'm just gonna take one more cut. Twenty-five point zero one, perfect. Now that's going to have an edge on it, so I'll try and take it off with this tiny file. All right, I should be able to take this uh, center away. Get this out of the way. Did I get that edge off? Not really. I'll see if I can get it off. There's not much holding this on. All right, I've finished that, and that's 
very nice on the end there. I have some fine steel wool here and some brasso. I'm not sure why I'm using brasso, but anyway, I'll put it on, turn it up a little bit, and I'll try and put a pattern on it. Or at least polish it, I guess. <laughs> Should have a polished pattern on it. Might have been a mistake putting the brasso on, I think. So I've taken the brasso off and I've just got dry steel wool here. Here's the disc. It's okay. It needs more work. It's got a line around the middle there, but it's getting close to what I was trying to achieve. Uh, here's the knob with the damaged disc in it. Let's see what ours looks like in there. All right, there it is. And it looks pretty good. Looks pretty, looks very good. Um, it doesn't go over the lip there. So there's still a bit of a lip on the plastic there. I could take the old one out. I'll maybe see if that can be done, but I'm pretty happy with that. I might mount it back in the lathe, in the chuck, and just try and improve on that. Compared to the old one, I reckon it looks pretty good. The knobs have a little indicator there, so I thought I'll try and reproduce it. I was just going to dob a bit of paint on there, but I think I'll try and reproduce it. So I machined up a spare one of these, and I've been practicing with it. It simply goes in there. This is a bit out of a screwdriver, like a plain screwdriver bit that you would put in your drill and two nails there to locate it and just push on it and there it is there so that's not too bad is it this is almost impossible to get a camera shot of it but oh there it is there so that's kind of matches that one there so here's the real thing stick it in there it's in a drill press just push down on it not too hard there it is there, you can see it, so yeah, that's come up okay, that'll be alright. On that note, I'm going to wrap up part one of this video. Next week in part two, I'll have a look at the record player. I still have to finish the black and gold plate that goes on the front, and I'll put it all together and we'll see how well it works. I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you can join me next week for my next radio adventure.